Hello, everybody. Happy Sunday, fun day. Happy day six of your shadow work challenge. This was the day that I was actually the most excited about because today on your exercise, you got to do Richard Simmons sweating to the oldies. But before we get into that, there's something I want to ask you guys. I am now been made aware um, with some of our, our friends in France that perhaps I have to be careful how I say this, perhaps maybe some of the um, more potent interviews and topics that I cover that I have to put on the other platform is not accessible to our, um, our French friends due to uh, censorship. So if that's the case, I've been thinking about this all morning uh, because I noticed with the Tamara episode that I released yesterday, the full conversation we had, I had to put it on the other platform and some people left comments. So they couldn't see it because they're in France. And so I was really thinking about this this morning, like how am I going to be able to get these interviews to our friends who are in countries where they're being restricted, not their fault. They're just being restricted by their governments. And I kind of considered maybe doing a mailing list. Um, I, I've never done a mailing list before, but I've worked for businesses who have. And so I was thinking maybe if you're from France, will you send me an email um, at esotericatlanta at gmail.com? And so I can figure out what's going to work for you guys. Like if I put these interviews in a mailing list or uh, from MailChimp or something and it went out to you, is that could you see it then? Basically is, is what I'm asking. How can we figure this 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 problem this puzzle out right um this obstacle out because um yeah that really sucks and so for our patriots uh friends over in france let me know what i can do let's figure this out how do we get this information to you guys um we can't put it on youtube so how how are we going to do this so let's figure this out together how to get around this obstacle and then of course if a mailing list if that's something you're all interested in i can start doing monthly mailing lists with um more information about yoga courses shadow work stuff interviews all that kind of stuff um whatever you guys want just talking out loud right now let me know let's figure this out together all right now back to Richard Simmons. So once again, this was my favorite. I was so excited about you guys doing this today. And so let's go back and look again at what you guys had to do. So you had to do um, today the 60 minutes sweat into the oldies. And I said to make sure to smile and have fun while you do this one. And again, this was the Richard Simmons. And I told you yesterday that there was a very specific reason why I picked Richard Simmons. And I already discussed this in our signal group. Um, there's actually multiple reasons why I picked Richard Simmons. But what I wanted to get you guys to do is to, is to do an exercise where you couldn't help but have fun. Where you couldn't help but have joy brought up in you within the exercise and Richard Simmons always for the most part generally speaking sparks joy in people and so this has to do with the lesson that is taught in the Bhagavad Gita and now the Bhagavad Gita is one of my favorite 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 uh, all-time scriptures and there was a concept that was spoken about in the Bhagavad Gita, or is spoken about in the Bhagavad Gita, which really hit me hard when I first started to study it. And it's basically loving the work for the sake of the work and not for the fruits of your labor. Now, any one of us who was raised in a Western society, or even not just Western society, we've kind of been taught to work really hard for the benefit of that hard work, right? Like get the good job, work the long hours so you can afford, you know, the beautiful house in the suburbs with the pool and the car and all that kind of stuff. It's all about the reward. Whereas when we're looking at the spiritual implications of what Krishna is saying in the Bhagavad Gita, no, don't even think about the reward. Don't even think about the finish line. Be in the moment, enjoy the work for the sake of the work. Now, when you first start to incorporate exercise as a modality for shadow work, a lot of pains come up in the body, which is necessary. That's the friction, right? And so it's hard in the beginning to be able to lean into that pain and enjoy that pain for the sake of working through the pain. 
if that makes sense. And so I wanted to put in Richard Simmons Sweat into the Oldies so that you could actually have a modality of joy and over time start to incorporate that element of joy into even the exercises that aren't so joyful. I'm not saying be toxically positive because toxic positivity is frankly disgusting and it's not a part of spirituality. So when you're doing the yoga and the bar and these movements are triggering deep held emotions, um, I'm not saying to just smile and uh, grin and bear it through it. No, not at all. I'm telling you to lean into the tears, to lean into the grief, to lean into the sorrow and, and embrace it. As Shanti says, welcome it. So in the beginning, I thought if I could just add one day a week where there's an entertaining exercise, then maybe this concept will start to shift in the mind and the patterning can change. Because one thing we're also looking at here is changing your way of thinking. So I just got off the signal group saying, you know, one thing that that we have to learn, especially as Westerners, is to toughen up, right? And we know that the controllers have tried to make us weak. They've gotten to us to a place where we're scared of our own bodies. And I, as a teacher, I see it all the time. Someone has a little bit of a runny nose and they freak out. You know, you get a little fever, you freak out. You know, your, your wrist hurts. Oh my God, you freak out, you quit. We're not that delicate. Our, we're the survivors of, of ancestors who survived plagues, fires, all sorts of stuff. We are, we are their descendants. We can take shit. You are not a delicate little flower that will break it at any, at any moment, right? No, you're tougher than that. And so that's one thing that, that spirituality is going to teach you. You have to toughen up. I mean, my friend Cindy and I were having a conversation this morning with Stephanie and some other people at her, her um, shala. The, West, the teachings we have now in spirituality are nothing compared to what people went through before us. The toughness the brutality that they had to go through. I mean, there are stories of, of what people had. Spiritual teachers, historically speaking, are not ni nice people. They're tough people. Because when we when you're coddled, when all that's ha when the coddling is happening, then the ego is being stroked. We have to come up against the ego, right? If you haven't been pissed off at your teacher at some point, then your ego hasn't been pushed, all right? And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to shatter that ego we're trying to allow the pains to come up in the body. So if you've got a shoulder pain, a knee pain, a back pain, a toe pain, whatever it is, it's not a pain that should be coddled. Yes, we're going to modify. Yes, we're going to work with it. But we got to ask the body, okay, body, what are you trying to tell me? When my right shoulder hurts, what are you trying to tell me? So that's your body's way of communicating with you. There is an injury here. There's a wound here. The, and, and all of these wounds, all of these physical pains are just manifestations from something emotional, even injuries. So even if you have the propensity to sprain your left ankle, okay, well, what's your left ankle trying to tell you then? Does that make sense? Now, I also want to reiterate that with detoxing, when you start to detox, not only are you detoxing food, and uh, chemicals, all sorts of stuff, but you're detoxing emotions. And as our friend Emmy said, energy is not bound by time or space. And so sometimes you're detoxing shit from when you were a kid that's still kind of hanging out in your system, right? So what to expect with detoxing? Headaches. You've got to get some headaches. Tiredness. You're going to all of a sudden feel very lethargic. Or you could come to the point where at night you you're having a hard time sleep, sleeping. Um, you're going to feel waves of emotion come over you. This is all normal. Very, very, very normal. Um, as far as the castor oil bath, uh, there's been a lot of conversation on Signal about this. Castor oil bath, all it's for is to help with your inflammation. It's detoxing your fascia. And so any type of digestion issues you have or respiratory issues you have are not coming from the castor oil, okay? So if you had stomach aches, after doing the castor oil bath on Friday night, it's because of something you ate earlier that day. It's not, it's not it doesn't have to do with the castor oil. Um, if you're finding yourself coughing now, you're having some respiratory problems, good. Something's moved, something shifted and shook up. That's your that's your heart chakra. That's right here. So what is being presented to you? So if you started to cough and you're feeling that come up, what is your body presenting to you to now work on? That's, I can't answer that for you. That's why we have the journaling is for you to start to come to that, that conclusion yourself. Now, also you guys, yesterday, um, you did sound bowl healing for the first time too. 
And um, I'm curious to know how you like sound bowl healing. Is this something that was new for you or was this something you've done before? Um, now tomorrow, Monday, November 7th, you're now a whole week into the challenge. So you're going to go back and do the 45 minute bar exercise again, the same one that you did the very, very first day. And you have the option to add Ashtanga Nurses 20 minute beginner yoga into this um, workout, either before or after the bar. Now you're going to do your cold minute, your cold shower for five minutes, and then you're going to do another meditation. So you're going to do a 15 minute om meditation. I have the link right here. Now om is the word of God. Okay. And with meditation, I, I've noticed that a lot of people do not do not understand meditation. They think meditation is sitting in a, in a room and like manifesting shit. No, that's not meditation. Meditation is finding a one pointed focus. You're not trying to create anything. You're just trying to get your mind to come to a one pointed focus. Okay. Um, I'm very hesitant to use the word manifestation because sometimes that word is used in the negative uh, for, for spirituality on the, on, and negative purposes. Your dharma is going to come to you re regardless of what you do. Okay. Your dharma is what's owed to you. It's your life purpose. If you try to manifest something that isn't yours, then you're dabbling in black magic. So I would be very, very careful about that. Okay. Now, so with the 15 minute on meditation, you're going to turn this chant on. You're going to close your eyes. I want you to sit with your back against the wall. And this is going to get your spine to start to straighten. And this is this could be very uncomfortable for you at first, okay? Again, the spine is shashumna. So expect in this process of this shadow work, expect for your back muscles to get sore. It's okay. Remember, you're not a delicate little flower. We got to toughen up. The soreness in the spine is all those muscles coming back to life. Muscles in your spine that perhaps went into atrophy as you got older. And as those muscles start to come back to life through strengthening, you're going to pull your spine up. Okay? And the, the wall is going to help you stay in that upright position because your spine carries Shashumna, which is the tunnel of energy that carries Kundalini. Okay, and so if it's bent and it's hunched over, it's like a hose, right? When a hose is bent, the water can't come through. And so we want to get that 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 column that of energy to be as upright as possible. Okay, and that might be frustrating for a while. And if your back is sore, awesome. That means that you've you you're training those muscles. It will pass. Okay. So you're going to get comfortable on the floor, sitting with your back against the wall, and listen to this om meditation for 15 minutes, okay? So when you, as you hear the om, I want your mind to be focused on that mantra, on the om, okay? If you, if you find your mind slipping off into other thoughts, just acknowledge them, let it go, and bring your mind back to the om. This is getting that one-pointed focus, okay? And that's all, 15 minutes. So, and I'm actually going to bring be bringing in hopefully a meditation teacher on towards the end of the challenge. You should not be meditating over 15 minutes. If you go over 15 minutes, you're moving into derangement, um, psychosis, all sorts of, of, of mental issues and escapism. And so this meditation teacher is going to get into that. Why any of the great teachers say only 15 minutes at the very most. All right. 15 minutes. That's it. Because we don't want you to go into derangement. We don't want you to go into psychosis. We don't want you to go into escapism, any of that kind of stuff. Okay. So only 15 minutes to get that one point of focus. And then you go about your day. Starting tomorrow, you're also going to start a food journal. You're going to start writing about your food. And that's why I had you study the doshas this weekend. So since you're week into the challenge, now you're going to add a food journal onto your daily journaling. This is going to give you a better understanding of how the energy of, of food affects the energy of your body in order for you to find the best food source for you. So I'm not telling you what to eat or how to eat because that's going to depend on your dosha. Not one diet is good for every person. And so first thing in the morning after you've exercised on your meditations, when you eat your breakfast, I want you to write down every single thing that you eat. Don't leave anything out. And then 30 minutes to an hour after you eat, I want you to jot down how you're feeling. And again, reactions to food don't just look like stomach problems or rashes on the skin. They can also look like anxiety and depression. And so I want you to note that as well. Are you feeling panicky an hour after you eat are you feeling depression an hour after you eat i want you to write that down and 
throughout the rest of this chat of uh, this challenge, you're going to be doing this. And so at the end of the challenge, you're going to have a whole record for yourself to start to see what foods work for you and what foods don't. And I know that this is going to be really hard programming to break. Okay. We have been conditioned and programmed and trained to believe that certain foods are healthy and certain foods are not healthy. But this is simply bullshit. It's bullshit. Okay. An apple, a raw apple for someone like me whose vata is detrimental to my health. Grapes are detrimental to my health. For a kappa though, apple and grapes are great. Okay, so this is about matching your energy with your energy. We have this weird thing called intuitive eating now, and that is something I think everybody on the spiritual path should kind of turn away from because our psyche has been so broken and so programmed that we don't know what intuitive eating actually is. When your dosha is out of balance, it's going to crave what it's out of balance with. So if my vata is out of balance, I'm going to crave apples and grapes, which is the last thing that I should be eating when it's out of balance. And so I have to have more intelligent eating, understanding the energy, knowing the energy, right? Because knowledge protects. Sorry, I thought I heard some someone come in knowledge protects and knowledge is power and knowledge is infinite okay and so for the rest of this month i'm not putting you on any type of diet plan because i don't believe in diets anyway i want you to examine yourself you are your own scientist mad scientist doing this experiment now i had this a week into i added this a week into the challenge for a reason if we were doing like a six month challenge I would probably add this in on the second month, but we're only doing 30 days. So I added it in the second week. That is because you've now had a week of exercise. And the more you exercise, the more you're going to become in tuned to your subtle body. All right. And so sometimes, especially for so programmed to believe a food is healthy, that we won't notice the side effects that our body is trying to tell us that this food is not healthy for us. But now that you're studying the doshas, now that you're exercising, you're becoming more in touch with your subtle body. And so you're going to pick up on these things a lot easier now. Um, I, we were talking in the, in the chat signal group, you know, people saying, oh, I eat healthy, but I'm having this issue come up. Well, obviously there's something in your diet. If you're eating healthy, but you're getting a headache, there's something in your diet that isn't working for you. Just because the controllers tell you something is healthy doesn't mean it is. I mean, hello, the controllers tell you this is healthy and we know it's not. And so this is where this deep programming and you're going to see as, as the guy from the um, Tartaria documentary says, you're going to start to see when your backup programming kicks in where you have this panic because you're told that this thing is, is healthy, but now it's you're told maybe it's not healthy. And so that backup programming is going to start to kick in. All right. And so that's something you're just going to have to watch yourself go through. And I will tell you, and, and it's also kind of an identity crisis, I think, especially for Westerners, because a lot of this stuff is not coming from what we perceive to be as our culture, right? Like the Ayurvedic system came from India. But I'm here to tell you, regardless of what race you are, your ancestors knew this. They knew this. It's just that the Western world was the first takeover in this new world, starts with an O, system that the controllers want to implement. So you're literally going back to your ancient roots of understanding energy, understanding herbs, understanding oils, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So you're, every person is literally going back to their ancestors and how their ancestors understood food, time, all that kind of stuff. But this is something that's going to take a moment to understand and to learn, right? And so be patient with yourself as you take these notes, as you discover this stuff. Um, that's why I always say in a, a healthy home, Every member of the house will have a different dinner, right? No one in the house should be eating the same dinner. That's not, no. Everybody in the house should be eating 
food based on their specific dosha and not everybody in the house is going to have the same dosha. Now, of course, they've gotten us to a place financially where we can't afford that. But I want you to start to think about that and really start to break that programming that they have us in because all the programming they put us under is not for our highest good. And we know this. So journaling, how do you feel a week after? This is for tomorrow. How do you feel a week after the challenge? How do your, do your clothes fit differently? Are you noticing muscle toning? Is the exercise getting easier? Is going to bed earlier getting easier? How is your overall feeling and mood progressing? through this what new emotions are coming up for you um how did you like the all meditation how is it different from sound bowl healing okay so some people you might be in the dark night of the soul right now when i say how was your overall feeling and mood progressing through this i want you to journal the truth i don't want you to live in the land of toxic positivity if you're feeling like shit write about it you're feeling like shit i've been there i have been there you know, it's it's a rough road. It's it's healing yourself isn't easy. It's the initiate's path. It's never easy. And so I want you to be very honest with yourself about where you are. Be vulnerable with yourself. All right. List five things that you like about yourself. List five things that you're grateful for today. List three new things you learned about yourself over the last week. Once again, turn your electronics off before um, one hour before bed and go to bed before 10 and then we'll get into Tuesday tomorrow. So we know astrologically we're in a crazy time right now too. Um, Saturn and Uranus are doing their tango, which um, if you know anything about the planet, Saturn is like father time. Saturn, Saturn is very organized. Saturn is very much about a schedule. Whereas Uranus is like the hippie dippy child who's a free spirit. All right. And so they're squaring off and doing their tango right now. We also know we have a blood moon coming up on Tuesday, which is a very interesting date for us here in America. Um, we know that we're in eclipse season. So the universe is offering you a lot of friction. I think it's very divine timing that this shadow work challenge is coming over this, this time astrologically as well. And so when we know what's going on, we can handle what's going on. And so don't be surprised. I don't, you know, whatever happens in the exterior world politically is going to happen. It's already in the works, right? I want you to observe what's happening within you. Where is Saturn and Uranus squaring off and tangoing? Where is that causing friction within you? I don't even want you to really pay much attention to the outside world. What is happening inside you, right? Whatever is happening in the outside world will happen and we'll get through it. But for this, I want you to, instead of looking outside of yourself for the answers, I want you to look inside of yourself. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that we wanted to talk about. People are having a hard time finding the signal group. I will put the link again. It's, it's on the community board, on my community board, but I'll put a link again for you guys to, to join us over there. And um, and just keep rolling through it, guys. This ain't easy. It's not easy. But no one ever said spirituality was supposed to be easy. The ones that said it's supposed to be easy are the infiltrators, right? You're doing more by by doing the first week of this challenge. You challenge. You've already shifted your ways, your yourself in ways that you're not even aware of yet. And so, um, awesome, incredible, great, amazing. Just keep going, one foot in front of the other, even if that means you have to crawl. Just keep moving forward. Marnie Alton said something once. It doesn't matter how fast you're going when you're going in the wrong direction. Likewise, it doesn't matter how slow you're going when you're going in the right direction. So just keep putting one foot in front of the other. This is why you came here to human was for this, for this work. So, all right, guys, let me know your experiences down in the comment section below. Once again, I'm heavily shadow banned. <sighs> we're doing something right so um please share this video with everybody like uh leave a comment share away so that we can get this stuff out to other people and really get humanity to get off their asses stop the people sitting around eating popcorn saying they're watching a movie are, are the people holding us up right now and so we want to spread this message and get people to really start to use their body and learn the lessons of their body so that we can all move together collectively through this collective karma all right guys i hope you enjoy the rest of your sunday i'll talk to you guys tomorrow bye